more minute and then we'll get started here. Um, if anybody needs to register um, that's on the, doing it on the web, you see a registration link there, please go in and register. I remember Natalie, um, I'm not going to remember your name. I want to say Lindsay. I know that's not right. Over here, Clara. Clara. <laughs> you know, like every semester there's one or two people I just go, I'm probably not going to remember Very your name. <laughs> it, for some reason, it's a really pretty name. <laughs> All right, we'll go ahead and get started here. And if somebody comes in, they can join us. Um, tonight, we are going to talk about we're going to talk about history, body types, and different breeds of cats. And there again is if you need to register. So today, we're going to cover the history of the cat, body types, and different breeds. So we're going to start out with the wild cat, which is the history of the cat. Um, the North African wild cat um, was first called upon to aid in rodent infestations. That means that there was lots of rats and mice running around. Um, and it is a bit larger than today's um, house cat. It took to domestication well. It drastically reduced the vermin, which would be the rats, the um, like the even like skunks and um, raccoons and things like that. Um, and the po population and around it was they lived around the granaries and the living areas. So the granaries was. Um, where they stored their grain, obviously. So if you're storing grain, then most likely you're going to have rodents, rats, mice, little creatures that come to eat your grain. Well, they don't want their grain eaten because that's either what they ate or they sold to make money. So the cats then would kill off the mice and the rats to keep them away from the granaries. So the people like that. So they liked having them around. Plus, people would just throw scraps out, like pieces of fat and stuff that they weren't going to eat. We, they didn't have, you know, like trash cans and trash collectors. They just had a pile they threw it. Well, the cats would come eat it, and then they just started living around there because it's way easier to have your food sitting outside waiting for you than to have to go hunt for it all the time. So that's really how um, the cats got started. European wildcat, um, in comparison to the African wildcat, is shy but fierce, and they did not take to domestication well. Um, Asians or pala cats may have possibly been domesticated by the Chinese and contributed to the long-haired Asian cat breeds we see today. So it's kind of hard to specifically narrow it down to how they started, like what one single breed started them. So um, in ancient Egypt, guarding corn was of great importance. And so when rats became an issue, the Egyptians began to worship the cats. And cats were valued so much that the spread of cats outside of Egypt was restricted. So Egypt wanted to keep all the cats for themselves because they guarded their grain, which they used for food and for money. So killing a cat in Egypt was punishable by death. And then came the Black Death. And cats during this time were associated with witchcraft. And this is in the medieval era. Religious leaders encouraged the death of cats. They thought that cats were servants of witches. Cats were burned, tortured, sacrificed, and hunted by dogs. And you know how nowadays we kind of have that superstition about black cats? Some people say, oh, black cats, or, you know, you don't want to cross the path of a black cat and stuff. 
Well, that all kind of started back then as a superstition, but obviously it's, it's not true. Um, but what do you think happens if you get rid of cats? What comes back? Rodents. Right, all the rodents. So due to the overrun then of the rodent populations, we got what was called the Black Death, and lots of people were dying in Europe over there um, around 1347 to 1353 because the rats um, had fleas, and the fleas were spreading the Black Death. And they were able to do that because the cats were not killing the rats because the cats were being killed and were um, not doing the job they first were brought for. So eventually the cat population increased because usually when something happens, people realize they don't like it, and so they let the cats come back because that was the only way to get rid of the mice and the rats that had the fleas that were causing the black death. Okay, so then in the 17th century, cats were for, favored, to, favored due to their artistic respect for their grace, their beauty, and cleanliness. Aristocrats and artists, aristocrats are like the, um, the upper people, the kings and the queens and all those people that thought they had all the money and, you know, were, thought they were special. And they had the money because they were the only ones that could afford the cats. Um, Aristocats and artists enjoyed pampering cats, and they began to selectively breed for their coat length, their color, size. So this is the first we know of people saying, you know, I really like the cat that's that color, but I like the length of the coat on that cat, so let's breed them and let's have a coat that's this long and this color on a new cat. Cats were brought to America by settlers to protect their ship brain, ship's brain stores from the rodents. So again, the same thing. If you have grain on a ship, you're going to get mice and rats and all those little creatures, and the cats would kill them, and so nothing would happen to the grain. So first, cats really did get utilized as a, for jobs. You know, they were, um, first they did work, and then they were domesticated. You know, they were seen as more as a uh, Oh, like we would look at any work animal, a horse or something that could do a job for us. But in that process, then they were domesticated because then they got to eat, they got to stay around people, and people started to look at them and be like, these are really cool. I like their bodies. I like how they move. I like how they, and it became um, really popular to have cats. Okay, so let's do an activity. Does anybody have any questions so far? So there is not a, a cat sort of traced back to domestic cats of Native American? No, there is not. You know, like the dog has the gray wolf that yeah. it's traced back to, but uh, if, it, if the cats weren't on the ships, they wouldn't be here. Mm -hmm. As far as we know. Yeah. But, yeah. I'm watching this cat play the game.
Natalie, are you done? Okay. Clara, I assume you're done? Yeah. Okay. Let's go through this then. Okay. Part one, determine if each statement is true or false. If it is false, change the statement to make it true. Natalie, we'll start with you. Wildcats were used to control avian infestations. Do you know what avian is? Birds. That's the, that's the scientific name for birds um, is avian. So, wildcats were used to control bird infestations. True or false? False. And how would you make that statement true? Very good, very good. Clara, Egyptians valued cats so much that killing a cat was punishable by death. True or false? True. It sure was, yep. Um, Harper, are you ready to answer one? Um, the Black Death was due to a low population of cats and a high population of, of infected rats. Harper, can you type in true or false for that? False. Awesome. Thank oh, no, that's true. Oh, never. It, I mean, true. God. <laughs> you meant that, didn't you? Okay, that makes sense. Um, Jocelyn, I'm going to unmute you. And can you tell me, the settlers brought cats on their ships to protect their wine from rodents. True or false, Jocelyn? False. How would you make that true? The settlers brought cats on their ships to protect their grain stores from exactly. the river. Yeah, good job. Yes. Amelia. We're going to yes, go down to part two, okay? Chronological order. Chronologically, order the events by placing one through four next to each line. Cats were selectively... Well, first tell me what would be number one. Let's do it that way. Which one did you pick as number one? I'm not at home, and I don't have my activity printed out. Okay, if I give you a, choices, can you tell me? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so I'm going to give you a choice between which one of these happened first. Cats were selectively bred by aristocrats and artists, or the North African wildcat was domesticated. The North African wildcat was domesticated. Very good. That's number one. Great. Harper, can you tell me what number two would be? I didn't get to that part. Okay. I'm going to give you a choice. Number one is the North African wildcat was domesticated. Okay. Would the next one be... Cats were tortured and sacrificed, or the spread of cats outside of Egypt was forbidden. Cats were tortured and sacrificed. No, we're going to go with the spread of cats outside of Egypt. Because remember, at first they loved the cats because they were they were killing the rats and everything. But then. They got, people started saying they were um, associated with witches, so then they got, were starting to torture and sacrifice. That was a hard one. You did a good job. So number one, North African wildcat was domesticated. Number two, the spread of cats outside of Egypt was forbidden. Adriana, can you tell me what number three would be? Cats were selected bred by Aristocrats, Aristocrats artists. artists. Were they, were they, was, did that happen before people uh, tortured and sacrificed them? Which happened first? They thought they were with, they thought they were with witches or that they were bred um, by the aristocrats and artists? 
They were they were tortured. It's kind of a um, we love you, we hate you, we love you, that sort of thing. So first they were domesticated, and then the Egyptians loved them. Then people thought the cats were horrible and they were witches, so they were tortured and sacrificed. Okay. So number four would be what, Natalie? Okay, so if you go straight down the line, four, four, three, two. All right. Now we're going to look at the body types of cats. And you might, unfortunately, have to look at some cats. So I know that nobody's going to like that, but we're going to do that anyway. All right? And there's a good chance they're going to be cute. So just be warned. <laughs> Decide what kind you want before you go home because you both have a parent here that can easily get that for you, right? Okay, body types of the cat. The cat body. Body size and adaptations. The cat's body is designed for mobility and speed. A body size can range from 5 to 18 pounds, 10 to 13 inches tall at the shoulder. So that would be like from the ground to their shoulder. And then 28 to 34 inches long from the head. And one thing I was going to look up and I just didn't get it done. I don't know if that's the head to the tip of the tail or from the head to where the tail starts on their rump. That I'm not positive. I guess that would be your homework to find out. So um, due to the environment and where they live, there are different body types. And one of them is called a cobby body. And the cobby body types are built to endure colder temperatures. They have short, thick bodies. See how there's a lot of, like we would think of it as fat, but it's really insulation for them because they live in the colder parts of the world. The features of it are that it has a round head, has broad shoulders, short legs, a short tail, and overall a shorter, compacter body. And that's what they call a cobby. Cobby body. Examples of a cobby would be your blue Russian. The origin is Russia, which we all know is cold. Here's your blue Russian. They're a beautiful cat. And the Turkish van, which if you had to guess, Natalie, where would you say the Turkish van is from? Turkey. Turkey, yeah. But you can see how they're just, they seem more solid. They're not thin and they're more compact. So they're better able to stay warm in the cold regions. So if we have a cobby body for a cold environment, it would make sense that we have some kind of body that would fit for the warmer environment. And this is called a foreign body. The foreign body is built to be able to endure hot temperatures. They have long, slender bodies. So obviously they don't have as much insulation on them. See how big their ears are? You can, they can use those to help cool them off because they can um, dilate the uh, veins and stuff in their ears to help cool off their body to bring in the coolness. They will have a triangular head where the cobby body had a round head. They're going to have the long legs and they're going to have a longer tail. Examples of a cobby body, or excuse me, of a foreign body is the Siamese cat. As you can see, the ears, triangle head, longer legs. 
Oh, you have an activity already. So go ahead. I'm sure you can guess what this next activity might be about. Let me know when you are done, and we will get started. Oh, that you have to get the thingy. The thingy. What thingy are you talking about? You have to get the activity sheets. Oh. Which I didn't get this time. <coughs> Caleb! I'll give you a couple more minutes. I know you guys are done, but the one girl said she didn't have time to get done, so we'll give her a couple more minutes. Huh? <laughs> that was probably the best time to do it. So Natalie, do you have a cat? So what what kind of body type would you say your cats are? Both cobby bodies. They're both uh, more compact with the round head. Clara, how about you? Um, grandma's definitely got a cobby. I don't know if they're quite foreign. I mean, they don't right. extreme, but not copy. <laughs> it's, it's interesting because um, that's what happens with selective reading. It's, you know, some of them you can look at and say, definitely, that's what you are. But when, when selective reading comes in, then some of those things like get watered down. Okay, Adriana, Abigail, Harper, Jocelyn, Amelia, are all of you ready? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes. Anybody not ready? Yeah. I'm ready. Is there anybody that's not ready? Okay, let's get started then. Uh, Clara, let's start with you this time. Does write a C for copy or F for foreign that corresponds to each description? Cold environments, copy or foreign? Copy. Great. A copy, yes. Paisley, triangle head, is that copy or foreign? Foreign. Very good. Yep, triangle head is foreign. Abigail, broad shoulders. I don't have the worksheet yet. Okay, well let me tell. Let me give you a description. If you have um, the copy body, they will have a round head, broad shoulders, and short legs. A foreign body will have long legs, long tail, and a triangular head. Which one has the broad shoulders? The first one. The copy body. Very good. Yep. Harper. Which one likes hot temperatures? Foreign. Very good. Jocelyn, which one would have a round head? Bobby. Yep. Yeah. 
Amelia, which kind of cat would have a compact body? A cobby body cat. Cobby body, good. Natalie, which kind would have a long tail? Foreign body, good. Clara, which one would have slender body? Foreign body, good. Uh, Paisley, which one would have a short tail? Foreign. Um, foreign, they have the long tail, the long legs, the, the triangle head. Which one would have a short tail? Cobby. Yeah, Cobby would. They have the round head, the short tail, the short legs. Good job. Um, Harper, the last one. Which one has long legs? Foreign. Good job. Okay, looking at our three pictures down there, Jocelyn, the first picture on the left-hand side, what kind of cat is that? Foreign. Is foreign or cobby? Good, foreign. Amelia, which kind of cat's in the middle, foreign or cobby? I don't have the worksheet. No, I thought it was... The other one that didn't have a worksheet. Okay, and let's go to Paisley then. Who, what kind of cat is that? Foreign. Good. And um, Natalie, which is the last one? Cobby. Cobby, good job, because it has round head, short tail, short legs, thicker body. The foreign cat has the triangle head, longer legs, and a longer tail, and it has those big ears. Okay. So now, <laughs> let's talk about the United States. So there are over 50 registered cat breeds in the United States. Breeds fall under the cobby or foreign body types, just like we talked about. You had to take a guess. What kind of cat do you think this one is? Natalie. Uh, foreign. Yeah, I would say it's closer to a foreign. Its head isn't round, round, it's a little short, but its ears aren't very big either, are they? So yeah, I would say there's more foreign in that cat. So is Cleo Paul. Breeds with a cobby body. You have the American short hair, the exotic, a Persian, a Turkish fan, Siberian, and a munchkin. Cute. The American short hair was formerly known as the domestic short hair. It's a typical American cat, and many retain their hunting instincts. They're relaxed naturally and yet social. So they're a very easy, easy cat to live with. There's a lot of American short hairs in the United States. It's a common cat, common pet. The Persian has a round head and eyes, a flat face. Can you see how its face looks kind of flattened? Long coat, has a very gentle nature. And 50% of pedigree cats in the United States are registered as Persian. Super cute, isn't it? It's a mustache. <laughs> it looks like it's angry. Yeah, they do. I would agree, they do. I don't know, it's, it, it's I think where they got the picture for Grumpy Cat, that used to have that Grumpy Cat all the time. And then we have exotics. They resemble a Persian, but is much smaller. They're referred to as Persians in pajamas. Has a Persian personality, but does not need the grooming that Persians require because they have shorter hair. They enjoy human companionship. The Turkish fan. I think this cat is really pretty. 
The Turkish van has color patches restricted to the head and tail areas, what they call a van pattern. So as you can see on this cat, the color pattern is mostly on the tail and the head. They love water since the breed developed near Lake Van. Turkey, Turkish consider and oh, okay, let me stop that. Turkish consider, consider Angoras and Vans to be the same, but they are recognized as different breeds in the United States. Siberian. They are a Russian breed and they are the largest of all cat breeds. Definitely a big cat with a lot of hair. And then the one everybody loves, a munchkin. <laughs> Munchkins have short, stubby legs, long body that is low to the ground, similar to a dachshund, but some view the skeletal structure as a deformity. So one of the things that will happen with munchkins is because they have the short legs and the long back, is that they have, sometimes have a trouble keeping themselves clean because it's hard for them to get clear to the back because their body is, is long. So that can, be, that can be an issue, but they are very cute. Now we're going to look at breeds with a foreign body. So all of them had cobby bodies. Now we're going to look at breeds that have a foreign body. Siamese, Balinese, Oriental, and the Sphinx. Which cat reminds you of your old pug, Roxy? Oh, the Persian. Yeah. I could see that. I could see how they would look like a pug. Siamese. It's the oldest breed of cat. They're known for exotic, darker color points, markings on the face, legs, and tail. So you can see the darker face, feet, and the tail up on their legs. In contrast to its light colored body, it needs much stimulation or playtime. They're very vocal and active, and they were once a sacred cat in their native land of Siam. And if anybody's ever been around a Siamese cat, they are very vocal. <laughs> very vocal. I asked my mom for a Siamese, and she said no, because they're noisy. Yeah, they are noisy. I would agree. They're very pretty, but there is the downside. They're noisy. Balinese. They're similar to a Siamese in body type, but has much longer hair. So you can see they also have the dark on the tail, the dark on the legs and feet, and then the darker face. Oriental. This is another similar breed to Siamese, but has many more colors, also have long and short coats, again, very vocal and active. It looks like it has bad ears. Yeah, those, those ears are, are really big, and that's one way you can tell that it's what, a, a cobby or a foreign body cat? Because of the big ears. Who has big ears, cobbies or foreign? Foreign. Yep, foreign do, because they're from the hot hot weather of plant. Sphinx, created by a spontaneous genetic mutation, a recessive trait, it is known as the hairless cat. The skin can be a solid or patched pattern. It is sensitive to sunlight and they have a very slender bill. So if you have a sphinx, 
and they're outside a lot, you do have to put suntan lotion on them because they'll burn. Yeah. I, I've never been a big fan, but they're loved. People like them. Harper, do you like those Sphinx cats? I kind of like them, but um, once my brother saw them, he screamed. <laughs> yeah, I can understand that. Yeah, I can understand that. They they aren't what you're expecting, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, time for an activity. Give you about, I don't know, let's see, how long is this activity? I'll give you five minutes or so. We're probably going to get out early tonight. Thank you, Adriana. Does anybody have any questions? Adriana, do you have a question? Yeah. What's your question? My cat, he doesn't really look too much of a cubbish, but he doesn't look too much of a... Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know why that is? That's because um, people have started to breed cats for what they like to see in a cat. And so then that starts um, making that cobby or foreign body um, less able to distinguish it because it's maybe been bred with other cats. And so some of those features are... Um, not don't stand out as much as the, as they would have um, way down the line. Maybe it's grandmother or something. Does that make sense? Yeah, I was just um, wondering because he he is a cobbish. Except, do they always have to have like a circle around? They all, do they always have to have what? The the round face. The round head. Um. They won't have to be, like, they don't have to be as round as maybe as what you see here, but they would not be as skinny as you saw on the foreign body. Does it have big ears or littler ears? Yeah, it's about medium. About medium. It's most likely closer to a cobby. Is it long hair, short hair? Short hair. Short hair? I would guess it's probably closer to a cobby then. I think you've seen him before. Herb in the showmanship. Oh, okay. I have a rag doll cat. How would you classify that? <gasps> How what? I have a rag doll cat. How would you classify him? Would he be a cobby or an um, I, Yeah, rag dolls, um, I would say, are closer to cobbies. That's, that's what I, I would say. Okay. Because they're, they're, they're usually a thicker body. They have, you know, their ears aren't extremely big. I would say, yeah, closer to a cobby. They're, they're so cute, aren't they? Yes, ma'am. Okay, Jocelyn, was there supposed to be a cat by each question? Mine didn't print right. There was supposed to, uh, Jocelyn, there was supposed to be a picture of a cat above the choices. Above each, like you have the choices A through D, there was supposed to be a cat above each one of them. Uh, mine only has three cats. Do you have uh, three on the top, or do you have like a big space and three on the bottom? 
Um, they're like both. Well, they're like all diagonal. Okay. Well, um, let follow along and let's see if you can figure out which ones you have. Because some of these are pretty obvious what they are. So if those okay. are the ones that you have, then that's fine. Why don't you go ahead and tell us what your first, um, what the picture is of your the first one you have. Um, I think it's a sphinx. Does it look like you have two hairless cats? Yeah. Yep, you're right. That's a sphinx. Good job. Uh, Amelia, did you tell me you didn't have worksheets? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, Harper, going straight across to the right, what was the next cat next to the sphinx? Siamese. Very good. Siamese. Dark face, dark legs, dark tail, and a light colored body. Good job. Adriana, do you have worksheets? Yep. Okay, what's the next one? Siberian. Siberian, yes. Good job. Definitely has the cobby face, so you know that it's not going to be any of the foreign choices. Very good. It is a Siberian. Uh, Paisley, do you have worksheets? My worksheet didn't print right. Okay. Then we will go to Natalie. If, okay. I'm gonna, the Oriental is not right. Straight down. Oh, right here. Mm -hmm. You had Oriental for that? Oriental is not correct for that one. If you had to make another choice. Oh, it should be Oriental. I wonder if the answer is wrong. That sure looks like that picture, doesn't it? Yeah. Let me see what the other one. Let's see what they put on there. This is, oh, interesting, okay. Yes, I'm gonna go with you and say oriental. The answer key is wrong. I thought it was exotic. Okay, that's what the answer key has. So let's see, I'm trying to find my exotic cats. Exotic was a shorter version of the Persian. It sure looks like that picture of the, oh, exotic is, yeah, exotic looks more like the Persian. It has, its face would be more like the angry face. Yep, so it's an exotic. Good job, Natalie. Okay. You caught, you caught the mistake in the answer. So it's an oriental. Or oriental, I'm sorry. Yes, right. oriental, oriental. Oriental. Thank you, Natalie. Good job. Clara, what would you say the next one is? Persian. Persian, yep. Yep. Um, Harper, can you tell me what the last one is? Siberian. Hmm. Did anybody else get Siberian? No. It's either Siberian or American short hair. Okay, what did you get, Natalie? I got American short hair. Clara, what did you get for that one? American short hair it is. Yep. I just wanted to make sure again that the answer key. Because it's like, um, it looks like a munchkin because yeah. it's sitting down. And it also looks like American short hair because it's just black and white. And yeah, you know, that is part of the problem with printing out in black and white is some of yeah. them, I would agree, it's easier if you can see the color. And um, also for some of them, it's easier if they're standing up and you can see their whole body. Yeah. So I agree with that, but that's for some of them that would have that that's a big help. Okay, do we have any other questions? Otherwise, we are finished. Um, I'm gonna go put up on the. I have two cats. They're both Poppy, Poppy Fern and Cookie. Except Poppy Fern has 
a sort of a triangle head. Its ears are big. Well, then it could be, um, that could, uh, that, you could have one that's a foreign body then. Like I said, when they start doing selective breeding, they all get kind of mixed up. But it's kind of fun to look at them and try and figure out what they are. I'm going to put up in the, snap, or in the chat box how to get to the survey. Um, since we're done early, if you guys want to do the survey here, you can. So let me get that up for them. Does anybody else have any questions? How do you get the worksheets? Um, okay, if you go to the beginning, let me get that link for you. I can get that link for you. If you go to <laughs> yeah, they, they have to put it up here. Um, Trying to get you to the website. The worksheets are up on the website, but of course I can't think of the name of the website right offhand. Okay, so here's the website. I will put this um, website you see right here where your, the handout materials are. I will put this uh, URL into the chat box. That's where you can go okay. to find the handouts. Now I gotta get that chat box to come back open. Okay, so worksheets. Are found there. And the survey. Oh, of course it's open. Oh, it is? Yes. You can look at it online. Non declared. Survey link is here. Please do the survey. I can't. Okay, so any more questions? I will pull up the survey for you guys. Who wants to go first? Come on over. Here, I'm on mute. 
Yeah, I thought about that when I was printing those off. I was like, oh, these are so much better pictures in color. <laughs> they're way cuter. And they're, they're better. It's just easier to tell stuff in color. If they, if they put the worksheets up on the screen for the kids that maybe don't, aren't able to print them when you go through your answers. Excuse me? You know, we could have done that. That was a, I didn't even think about that, but that would have been a great idea. We could have just put them up there. I think that's a great idea. And I'll have to, if I do it again, or I'll bring it up to Lisa. That's a great idea. Yeah, what can I help you with? I thought somebody was talking to you. Yeah, I was thinking somebody had a question. Did somebody have a question? That is actually a really good idea for kids who, like you said, in one kid, theirs didn't print off correctly. Yeah. Well, and you and maybe you'd have to color pictures too. You definitely would. Yeah. Well, great. So I'll have to. Dr. Carl? Yeah. Uh, do you have a question? Yes. Um, What's your question? You rule on the website. It's viewable on the website. The worksheets are? Is that what you're asking? Slides. Yeah, like yeah. the slides on what we learned. Um, the slides are not going to be viewable yet because Dr. Carr goes in and she edits out like the beginning when I just have it up and running and nobody's here. She goes in and edits that part out. So then in the next, usually she'll do it tomorrow. So by Monday, they should, she should have them up there for you. Yeah. So. Great. All right, guys, have a good evening. All right, everybody, have a nice evening. Thank you. Any more questions before I shut the chat box? Yes. Yeah, what can I do for you? I was wondering where were they at though? The PowerPoints? Yes. Well, they should be on this. Um, she, what Dr. Carr usually does is send them, send them out, email them out to people who weren't, did you weren't able to see the PowerPoints? Is that what you're saying? No, I just, the first part. Oh, you missed the first part? Yes. Okay, what's your name? Adriana. Okay, let me talk to her. What county, what um, is your last name? Hernandez. I'm gonna put in um, Dr. Carr's email address right here in the chat and then if you want to feel free to email her and let her know okay okay thank you you are welcome any other questions before i shut this down all right thanks for coming everybody